Let's start with the topic of remainders. We all know the fact that the dividend is given by divisor into quotient plus the remainders. For example, if I take a number say 37 and I want to divide this 37 by number 5, then the process is something like that we have to take the number say here, we have to take 7 so that the nearest multiple of 5 to 37 is 35. So then we will take the difference. So whatever the difference comes, this if it is less than the divisor, then this becomes the remainder. So this is the remainder here. Here the number 7 is called the quotient. Number 5 is the divisor and this number 37 is the dividend. So this is very uh, elementary things which we already know. Now let us analyze the concept of remainders in detail. So here when 37 is divided by 5, the remainder is 2. That means we can say that 37 is 2 more than a number which is 35 here, which is a multiple of 5. So this is also one way wherein we can understand the concept of remainder. So for example, if number n is divided by say 13, and we get the remainder as say 4, then we can say that number n is 4 more than some multiple of 13. So this is another way of framing this relation. So let's see some points to remember on remainders. So it says that the remainder is always less than divisor. The second thing is if the remainder is 0, then the divisor is called the factor of dividend. For example, if say, uh, if I want to divide say 39 by 3, then the remainder is 0 and the quotient would be 13. Since the remainder is 0, that means 3 is factor of 39 or we can say that 39 is a multiple of 3. The third thing is the dividend is less than the divisor than the remainder is dividend itself. So this is self-explanatory. So for example, if I want to divide say 5, say in this example, say 5 is divided by 6, then since 5 is less than 6, then the remainder is 5 only. In such case, the quotient will become 0. Now let's move to the very important concept and that is concept of negative remainder which help us to solve many complex questions based on remainder easily. So what does this concept of negative remainders mean? So let's understand with the help of an example. So if I take a number say 28 and if I want to divide it by 5 then we all know that the remainder in such case will be 3 and this 3 is nothing but plus 3. So of the nearest multiple of 5 which is close to 28 is 25. So 28 is plus or 3 more than 25. So that is the that is how we find the remainder as 3. But what if, if I compare this number 28 with the next multiple of 5 which is 30. In such case I can say that this number 28 is less than 30 by a number 2. And in the previous case 28 was 3 more than the nearest multiple of 5 that is 25. So if the excess portion is considered as the remainder or the positive remainder then we can say that there is a deficiency of minus 2 when I compare 28 with number 30 which is a multiple of 5 just greater than the number 28. In this case since 28 is 2 less than 30 then we can also say that when 28 is divided by 5 then the remainder is minus 2. So this is the concept of negative remainder that the in the earlier case there is an excess portion so we took it positive. In this case there is deficiency of, of 2 to make this number as a multiple of 5 so we can call this as negative remainder. So both this have the same meaning the only thing is the comparison is done. In the previous case the comparison is done with a multiple of 5 which is slightly which is just less than 28 in the latter case we are just taking multiple of 5 which is just more than 28 and also an important thing here to note is that if I have a positive remainder then I can convert into negative remainder and vice versa also for example if I take a number n and it, when it is divided by 13 and we are given that the remainder so is 4 so here we can say that n is uh, n is 4 more than some multiple of 13. So if I take say 13 k1, then the difference between 13 k1 and n will be plus 4. 
But if I take the next multiple of 13, which will be say 13 k1 plus 1, then in such scenario, I can say that there is the difference between these two multiple of 13 will always be 13, right? So here, since n, n is 4 more than uh, the previous multiple or 13 k, k1, then here we can see that this difference is 13 and difference between n and 13 k1 is plus 4, then we can say that the difference between n and the next multiple of 13 will be 9. So with this logic, I can say that n is 9 less than some multiple of 13. So if there is a positive remainder plus 4 in this case, then we can also write it as that this is equivalent to minus 9 also. So this is how we basically can convert from positive remainder to negative remainder and we can also convert from negative remainder to positive remainder. So if there is some number x which when divided by 7 and which gives me remainder minus 2, then the positive remainder can easily be obtained by adding the negative remainder to the divisor which will be plus 5 and vice versa. I hope this concept of negative remainder is clear because this we will be using is extensively to solve some of the complex questions based on remainders. So in the next video, we will take some solved examples to apply this logic.